Hey friends, welcome back to Mark Kelly Farm. We are in the kitchen again. And it's that time of year where I'm going to do my Christmas candy that we give out to family. And uh, I like to do it early in the month so people aren't burnt out on sweets yet. Because you know towards Christmas they're getting little gift packages from everybody. And you kind of get burnt out. So... I like to hit up everybody early in the month with my Christmas candy so they gobble it up and they're not sweeted out yet. So we make three different recipes and we package it up in little Christmas tin uh, containers and deliver it to our family. So I'm going to make all three recipes here. I usually make three batches of each recipe, but for sake of doing the video, I'm going to make one batch of each. So we're going to start out with the hardest. It's not that hard. We're going to be making our English toffee. And it, it sort of tastes like almond roca if you've ever had that. And this recipe goes back years since I was a little, little kid. Uh, my dad's employer, his mother, Dorothy, um, she used to make this every year and she passed it down to her kids and such. But Dorothy would give us a package of this every December right around Christmas. And it was the highlight of our Christmas. And Dad would take that package and I remember he used to hide it in our big walk -in, their big walk-in closet in their bedroom so it didn't all get gobbled up because he loved this stuff. So we've acquired that recipe over the years, and I've been making it every year since because I just absolutely love it. It's a great memory from my childhood. So we're going to get started. So to begin with on the almond or the English toffee is we get our almonds, and back in California, all we all call them almonds. All my farmer friends grow almonds. And the tale is they're almonds till you knock the L out of them to get them out of the tree. And then they're almonds. Just a little joke they do out there. But we have to chop these two different ways. And I just use the Ninja chopper here that we have. And you don't have to do them separately. What happens is you'll chop them. Some will get more chopped and some will get less chopped. And what I use is our little spider thing here that we have for deep frying. I sift it with this. So all the small bits go into this bowl, and then I dump all the big bits into this bowl, because we need both. Uh, this is going to go into the toffee itself, along with some of this, and then half a cup of this is going to go as a topping when we're done. The fine ground almonds are going to go on top. So you're going to need a cup of these, which is going to be split in half. You need a half a cup of these. So we'll add a half a cup of this to a half a cup of that. And that actually goes inside the toffee mix. All right, we've got our almonds separated out. we got the half a cup of finely chopped. And then we have the half a cup of fine and the half a cup of coarse mixed in here. And I wanted to tell you, if you have bulk almonds like this, it's cost you a fortune to get this in the store. But I luckily have uh, almond farmers that are good friends of mine that I get these from. And these are from the 2020 season, which is last year. But if you keep these in the freezer, they don't get rancid on you. They stay fresh. So always make sure your nuts, if you have them in bulk, stay in the freezer. So let's get on to our next step. All right, the next thing on our agenda is we have four cubes of margarine. And yes, I said margarine. Anybody that knows me knows I'd rather use butter. And you can use butter, but you take the chance of the butter separating and your toffee mixture is going to get nasty, oily, weird. So the original recipe called for margarine, and I've tried to use butter before with some success, but I've also had problems with it. So I just stick with the margarine. Uh, Got to do it. And to the four sticks of margarine, we added two cups of sugar. So it's basically half and half. You got two cups of margarine and uh, two cups of sugar. I've got this on low so it starts to melt. Um, I'm going to bring this up slow. Anybody that's ever made like candy, 
knows if you do this too fast, you'll go way past your your target temperature and you'll get the wrong texture with your toffee. Now we have our half sheet pan at the ready and we have our nut mixture at the ready which we will dump in when we reach target temperature and stir it real well. Um, the other thing you want to watch out for is crystallization. So we're going to put a lid on this pan and what that's going to do is as the moisture starts to cook out of the mix the lid will trap the moisture and run it back down the sides and that's going to moisten and dissolve any stray sugar crystals that may be on the side of the pan. The reason you want to avoid stray sugar crystals because once this gets going if a sugar crystal gets in there um, that hasn't been melted down it will crystallize the whole mix and you'll end up with a mess. So there's some technique involved in this. So we're going to get a lid and put it on here and then we'll come back when this thing starts to boil it. All right we've got our lid on and I bumped our heat up to medium since we're ready to roll. I have my heat proof spatula ready to go. I have my candy thermometer ready to go and we got this mixture going. Now a lot of people when they put the butter and the sugar in there will want to get stirring this thing real early. Don't do that. Just let the butter melt, let the sugar start melting, and as it boils it will kind of stir itself. You don't want to get any stray sugar crystals on your spatula. If you insist on stirring it early, use a different spatula later. Don't use the same one. Again, we don't want this to crystallize. But this thing will stir itself, so don't worry about that. So when it starts to boil, we'll come back and our target temperature is just under the hard crack stage which is a little above 300 but we're going to stop it at 290 which is above the soft crack and below the hard crack stage if you know what that is. It basically has to do with cooking sugar um, and those stages will be listed on your candy thermometer. You can see hard crack soft crack, hard ball, soft ball, firm ball, all that. And that's what they're talking about at the temperature. And it has to do with the amount of moisture that's boiled out of the mix. The more moisture you boil out, the hotter the mix gets. Okay, now that we've got a decent boil going and I've seen the moisture coming down the sides and going down the sides of the pan, that's going to take care of any stray sugar crystals that were on the side of that pan. So now we can remove the lid so the moisture can actually escape. And at this point I'm going to take these almonds and stir them into the mix. We're going to cook them in the mix and then we're going to place the candy thermometer also in the mix. Okay, you can see the mixture is kind of stirring itself as it boils. And that's what we're looking for. We're up to about 240 degrees. We want to be between 280 and 300. And then we'll know it. we're at uh, 290. But it's looking really good. We're not going to disturb it. Now if you don't have a candy thermometer, people have done this just by the look of it for years. It's going to turn like a dark colored peanut butter. And that's what you're looking for. And you'll almost see little wisps of smoke coming out. It's like just on the borderline of burning probably is where this is almost done. But we'll set up the tripod and we'll show you the process as we move forward. Okay, we just hit 280 degrees. We're approaching 290, so we're almost there. Okay, we just hit 290, so we're going to take our candy thermometer out of here. And we're going to pour it into the sheet pan. And we're going to want to make sure this spreads out real good. Nice flat surface works well. 
had to do a wardrobe change. It was getting warm in here in the kitchen. But that's what she looks like poured into the pan. We have uh, just a little bit of the oil separated out in the corner, but that's okay. Not going to be a problem. And you can see all the nuts and the bits in there. So we're going to wait till this just starts to set up to where the top starts getting firm, but it's still warm before we do our next step. While everything's still nice and warm, you want to get that pot, get some water in it, kind of deglazes the bottom of the pot, and that water will melt that sugar and everything will be a lot easier to clean. Alright, it's looking real good. It's starting to set up. Um, I wanted to mention, if you do get a little oil separation, just take a little paper towel and just wick it right off to the top. It won't hurt anything. What you're worried about is if you had some big crazy oily mess. But this is looking real good, so we're going to grab some chocolate chips. Okay, while your mixture is still good and warm, you want to sprinkle the top of this with semi-sweet chocolate chips, the ones you use for your favorite cookies. So make sure they're the semi-sweet. I guess you could use milk chocolate, but I don't think it would taste the same. It wouldn't back, bring back the same memories that, that I have of my childhood. So spread them out as evenly as you can and try to keep them all in one layer. And this warm mixture in the pan is going to start melting these chocolate chips is why you want them in one layer. So look through and anything that's stacked up a little tall, just kind of knock it down to where you got one layer. And then you'll see these chips will start to get shiny. They'll change color. And once they do that, we can spread them out. All right, as you can see, our chocolate chips have turned a shiny, darker color. So get yourself an offset spatula. The reason why you want an offset spatula is it's too hard to get a flat one in here. You won't be able to get down to the edges of the pan. But we're going to start just working this around the pan. I go one way and then we'll turn and go the other way to make sure we get good coverage all the way across the pan. So I'll turn it around now so I can get this back edge. So we've gone one way. I need to push a little down into that corner. So then we'll start going the other way to where we got the chocolate worked into all the areas of the pan. Tilting your blade to keep from it, keep it from digging in to your chocolate. Just kind of let it ride. Kind of like if you're finishing concrete. So you concrete layers have a big future in the baking business if you ever want to switch occupations comes in pretty handy your concrete finishing skills so pretty much got it I'm just going to take down like any high spots that I see cover any areas that aren't covered we got a little bit over here in this corner put some over there make sure I don't have too much along the edges but that's what we're looking for right there and if my granddaughter Ramona was here, she could clean that spatula for me pretty quick. But since she's not, that's my job. Ooh, that's yummy. So, while this chocolate is still kind of in a soft liquid state, we want to put on our finely chopped almonds. And I do that with my hand. You just go... And just evenly distribute those across the top. And we are almost done, folks. And I'm going to have to make a pan of this just for me, I think. Because it's that little taste of the semi-sweet chocolate. Puts it over the top.
a lot of reasons we do this video because this is a you know a cherished recipe from way back and my grand granddaughter doesn't live local and so I can't show her a lot of stuff I mean I can when she gets older and is coming here for the summers and God forbid I'm still alive I can show her some stuff but if for some reason uh, with my health issues or whatever that I die early these recipes will still be around for her so if I'm gone Ramona I love you and I do most of this stuff for you and if I have other grandkids in the future I'm not excluding you you're just not around yet but uh, I would love you just as much and hopefully I get to see you before my time is up so I just kind of tap those almonds down into the chocolate lightly you can clean that off that spatula and do it too but that makes those almonds stick and they don't fall off so much when you're starting to break this up so I'm going to clean that spatula and get in here and do this a little bit better If you don't do this, that all that stuff wants to fly off once you start breaking this up. Now you probably noticed we did not uh, grease or oil this pan before we used it. But there's enough oil in that toffee mix to where it doesn't stick to the pan. And once this cools, I probably won't fuss with it till late tonight. Because it's going to take a while to cool down. And we keep our house about 63 degrees, so... It won't take forever, but we'll start breaking all this up and it'll all stay together and it'll all come up off the pan. So that's that recipe. Believe me, you will not be disappointed if you try that recipe. And once you nail it to where you get it right every time, it's going to become one of your favorites too. Uh, really love Dorothy. She was like another grandma to me. I remember on the first time I had a birthday when she was around. Uh, she gave me a shoe box full of 100 pennies. And there was a bunch of tissue paper in there. And boy, I thought I'd hit the jackpot. Because back then you could get one piece of bazooka bubble gum for a penny at the store. In fact, at one point they were half penny. So you could get two pieces with one penny. But uh, I thought I was in hog heaven. That, all I could see was 100 pieces of bubble gum with those 100 pennies. So that's one of our recipes. We're going to start the next one now that's even easier. As we go, these recipes are going to get easier. This was the hardest one, and it's not that hard. So let's start our, we used to call it O. Henry bars, but it's kind of a, a version of a rocky road. It's really good. Okay, the next recipe, super easy, and the one after that is even easier. This recipe, my girls, no fail, every Christmas, say, can you send me that recipe? So now I'm going to tell them, hey, watch the video. Uh, probably send it to them anyway. But they try to make it every year, too. So in a microwave-safe bowl, we are going to start with some Reese's peanut butter chips. I'm going to get a, a knife so we cut these open. So in with the whole bag. All right. And then we're going to go with a, another bag of the semi-sweet chocolate chips. This is the cheaper version because they didn't have enough of the name brand version I usually buy, but they're going to be just fine. And then a whole bag of butterscotch chips. And that goes in the bowl. The bigger bowl you can get that will work in the microwave, the better. Because once you start mixing this stuff up, it, uh, the bowl gets a little thick or a little little full. So we're just going to stir these chips up 
so they have a good mixture even before we melt them so we don't have to combine as much when they come out of the microwave and yes i said microwave simple 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 recipe so three minutes on high in the microwave all right that was three minutes in the microwave be careful your bowl is going to be a little bit warm so now we're going to come in here and stir this up now that it's mixed or melted until we get one solid color Scrape in the side of the bowl just a little bit. Make sure everything's mixed up. If you don't have a microwave by chance, you can melt this in a double boiler on the stove. You never want to put chocolate directly over the heat because it'll separate on you and you'll make a mess. So always over a double boiler so you get really slow, even heat. All right, we got one solid color now. So we're gonna let this mixture sit for three minutes. And that's gonna let it cool just a little bit so we don't melt our marshmallows and then we'll continue from there. We're waiting for that mixture to cool so we can mix it together. We have another sheet pan on the ready over here. We put a pre-cut piece of parchment. I can't say enough about those. If you do a lot of baking, get your pre-cut parchment. It's fantastic. And then we have another piece of parchment here to help us smash down the top, which you'll see us do in a little bit. And then I use a sheet pan to put on top of that just to make sure it's nice and flat. Now, what we're going to mix into the mix is two cups of plain Rice Krispies and a small 12-ounce bag of marshmallows. But... These uh, guys are trying to mess with the consumers again. They're go, going to 10 ounces like we talked about before. Even this off-brand of chocolate chips is now 10 ounces. They're supposed to be 12 ounces. So fleecing the public again. So three minutes has elapsed. We're going to dump in our two cups of Rice Krispies and our bag of the mini marshmallows. You can see why we need a big bowl. So we're going to stir this up now. Slowly and carefully because otherwise you'll make a mess all over your counter. But just kind of fold everything in. And when you get all done, you won't be able to see any of the white of the marshmallows. So continue folding and stirring until the white of the marshmallows goes away. So I'm scraping the bottom of the bowl, getting some of that chocolate mixture up off the bottom. It's a really tasty recipe. Kelly calls this stuff Christmas crack. Because you, once you start eating it, you just can't stop. So, not a good idea to leave a lot of this laying around. Because it'll get ugly, folks. You'll be stopping by that little pan of goodies every time you pass it, eating one. So, you see how the, the white of the marshmallows is now gone. And we want to work pretty quick with this. So we'll go over to our sheet pan and we want to dump all this out while it's still workable. Get as much out of that bowl as you can. It's pretty sticky stuff. Good idea to use a spatula. I love these little spatulas from Pampered Chef. We got like eight of these darn things because we love them. Otherwise, the dishwasher would always be, they'd always be in the dishwasher. We'd never get to use one. So then you're going to spread this stuff out. Kind of hold your parchment as you do it because the parchment's going to want to move around in the pan. And unlike the English toffee we did 
we just want to get close to rectangular with this. You don't have to get crazy. I'm going to put my finger on the other side now so I can go this way. And you're just flattening it out to get kind of the same thickness all the way across. Get a little extra there. So once we get close to rectangular is when we're going to give it the old smash and that's going to smooth out the top. Now you could leave it like this if you like the rustic uh, texture to it. Wouldn't hurt it a bit. But I like it a little flatter. It's easier to handle. And Ramona, I'm going to clean that off too. But that's going to be in a minute. So we put our other parchment over the top. Get our other sheet pan. And then we just smash it down. And you can see that gives us a nice flat top to that. I got a little chocolate on my sheet pan I got to wipe off. So we're going to let this cool just like the other recipe. And this parchment will peel right off the top. And the parchment off the bottom the same way it'll, it'll come right off of that parchment. All right, that is another recipe down. Uh, we've got that put out to cool too. So on to the next recipe. First thing, we're going to roast some almonds or some almonds. I'm starting to say almonds now that I don't live out there. But a uh, single layer of almonds on a sheet. And they're going to go in the oven at 325 for 15 minutes. Uh, these are uh, whole uh, raw almonds. And you'll find that when you roast them, you'll get a lot nuttier, crispier flavor to them. Back in the day when we were harvesting almonds in the field, when I was farming, we would get the almonds that fell down onto the motor of the pickup machine uh, at the end of the day, and we would crack those out and eat them, and those were roasted almonds. They're really good. And do yourself a favor, folks. Wash your dishes and utensils as you go. Don't turn a holiday baking experience into a nightmare by having a heaping sink full of dishes to have to do when you're done. Believe me, that spoils all the fun. All right, our almonds are toasted, and they smell really nutty toasty. It smells so good in this kitchen right now with all the chocolates and the nuts and all that smell. Fantastic. Now, for the next recipe, you don't have to wait for these to cool because we're going to be melting chocolate anyway. And we can mix it together and while these are warm they'll kind of keep the chocolate uh, in a melted state they won't cool off the chocolate really quick so let's get the chocolate going and homie if you're watching I need more almonds so we've got one bag of the milk chocolate chips and we've got them in a little bit smaller bowl because we want to try to concentrate everything in the middle without spreading out all over the place so one minute in the microwave for these. And you'll find when you're cooking in microwaves, um, if you're cooking an item and it says to cook it for one minute, if you cook two of those items, it's generally going to take two minutes. Three of those items, it'll take three minutes. So if you remember, we cooked three bags of those earlier, it took three minutes. So kind of a rule of thumb when you're using microwaves. Our chocolate wasn't quite melted enough, so we put it in for another 15 seconds. And we'll keep checking it, stirring it up until we get the right melt that we want. But don't go more than about 15 seconds at a whack because you don't want to hit this stuff too hard because it'll separate as if you had it on the stove. And then once it gets close, once you give it a quick stir, it'll kind of even out the heat and the rest of whatever's not melted will melt. So our chocolate is sufficiently melted now. And we may have to remelt as we go. If it starts setting up too much and hard, too hard to work with, we can pop it in for another 15 seconds. But now we're going to start incorporating some of our almonds. And uh, I don't pour them all in at a time. I put a little bit in at a time because uh, I really didn't measure these almonds. So I want to make sure I don't overload the chocolate to where they don't get coated. So I'll come back when I have the right amount of uh, nuts in the bowl here. So just like when we were stirring up the Rocky Road mix, you just want to stir until all the almonds are coated. And if you get to where you get 
more chocolate than almonds later on down the bottom of the bowl. You just take some more almonds, throw them in there, almonds, throw them in there and mix them up. So now we're going. what we're going to do is we're going to take a, like a little teaspoon and we're going to pick up three to four almonds on a spoon and we're going to drop them onto our parchment papers and make little nut clusters out of these. This is a good sit down job where you can sit down at the table, have your kids help you. The kids will have a blast. So we'll get some of these onto the cookie sheet. So we're going to get in here in our mix, pick up three to four nuts on a spoon, and then we'll put them right here on the parchment. And you want to kind of make sure they stay together. You don't want to spread them out, otherwise they won't stick together when they cool. But just like that, it could not get any simpler. And these are fantastic. You can do these with any nut. You can do it with peanuts or cashews, whatever you got, walnuts. Um, you can get creative with it too. You can add other stuff to the mix. Say you wanted to make a batch of that toffee with just the toffee itself. And then break it up later into little pieces. Then maybe mix that into the mix, have little toffee pieces in it. But get creative and make stuff your own when you're doing this kind of stuff. But this is going to fill this sheet up. And you don't have to use a cookie sheet for this. You could just lay the parchment out on the table too. It would work just fine. But uh, a little more time consuming than the other recipes. And you can use your other finger to get in there. Lay that stuff out, make go a little bit faster, but then you'll have dirty finger. So we're going to continue to do this. I'm not going to bore you with the whole darn sheet, and we'll come back when we're done. All right, folks, uh, the nut clusters, we ended up with a pan and a half of those. So we got all three of our recipes made. If you remember, we're going to make two more batches of everything. But this will get me started on my gift boxes. I got to do some, uh, finish up some painting on the, on the uh, chicken coop today. So I want to go out and do that now. It's warmed up outside. So hope you enjoy these recipes. Make some time with your family. Schedule a day and do your holiday baking together with your kids and get grandma involved and make it a tradition where you get together with family and make this stuff to give out to your friends and family. I even play Christmas music while I'm doing this to kind of get me in the mood. But uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and we're going to get this stuff packaged up tonight. We'll see you on the next video. So stay safe, stay healthy. We love you guys. And as we used to say at work, so we didn't offend anybody, Merry, Happy, Hana, Kwanzaa. That includes everybody, I think. Love you guys. Bye.